This beginning level recorded class is titled Navigating the Software. It's designed for clinical team members new to CS Imaging Software version 7. During this recorded class we will demonstrate how to navigate the software, explore menu items, and take action from menu items such as acquiring, saving, retrieving, deleting, utilizing the slideshow feature, importing, and copying. Navigating the software. Once the patient has been selected from either the patient browser or your dental practice management software, the CS imaging software is displayed. At the very top, the software name is displayed as well as the version and then the practice name. By default CS Imaging captures the name of the workstation. The practice name can be modified in the preference settings. Changing it will not change the workstation name but will change the name of the practitioner within the software for displaying and printing purposes. Let's take a look. From the Options menu, select Preferences. Select the General tab. Select the button to the right of Name a Practitioner. For single doctor practices, complete the fields as labeled. For a practice name, utilize the last name field. Select OK to close that window and save the changes and OK to close the Preferences window. For more detail on Preferences, refer to the recording about software preferences. The next thing you want to do upon entering a patient's imaging file is to verify the name of the patient is correct. This is also displayed along the top of the screen. The dental arch filter is automatically displayed when the imaging software is open. Click a highlighted tooth in the dental arch filter. A highlighted tooth indicates that there are images associated with that tooth. To open a single image or multiple images from the tooth associated with those images. Select one image or multiple images and double left click the last image. Let's take a look. In the dental arch filter we select tooth number three. All images associated with that location are displayed. A single click on one image and a double left click on the other and all of the selected images will open. Additionally there's a modality filter the letters P represent images that were taken with a CareStream panoramic machine, F represents images saved in a format, and C represents images acquired from a CareStream cephalometric unit. Selecting one of the modality letters will reveal all images of that type and you can open them from the history the same way. Single left click to select images double left click to open. Exploring menu items. From the file menu you can acquire images from various sources such as sensors. This one's labeled new RVG image. RVG stands for radio visiography. Or new panoramic images from a CareStream pan unit. New Ceph, new 3D image, cone beam scan or object, intraoral camera, or phosphor plates labeled new CR for computed radiology. You can also open history of images stored for this patient from the file menu. We will review other options such as saving and deleting and the other file functions in their respective sections. Notice the last choice of the file menu is to exit the software. 
context is the next menu item you use a context to save and retrieve a current display of images images regardless of their format type such as intraoral photos and radiographic images can be saved in the same context this makes it easy for retrieving select a required format from the drop-down format allows capturing a series of images options Options is the path to software preferences and allows the user to customize the software to suit their practice. Use the Window menu to arrange windows in your work area. Clear screen to close all images on the screen. Rearrange screen to reposition and resize images on the screen. Iconize All will minimize all opened images. Tools Default Position will place the image processing tools such as Enhancement Tools and Control Panel and the Patient History Window to the system defined positions. Let's take a look. Here's one imaging management tool known as the enhancement tools. Here's the other known as the control panel. And here's the dental arch window. If we select the option to window tools default position, it puts all of the tools in their system defined position. The last item of the Windows menu is to toggle on or off the main toolbar. Those are the pictured icons in the main toolbar. The question mark reveals the help topics. Also toggles on or off the tool tips. Software version can be found under help and about as well as license information. Now we'll explore the main toolbar, the pictured icons, the first of which is History Open. The next allows any newly acquired image or imported image to be saved. It's the Save dialog window. And the next section will take action from the file menu, which will include saving images. We'll review the content of the Save dialog window. Save Context is used to save images under one heading. Any image in the workspace, despite its format type, can be saved and retrieved from context. Manual Format allows a user to restore down images, in this case in multiple mounts, for side-by-side -side comparison. You can also utilize manual format to downsize a format and allow capture of an individual image. Use a format allows you to select a format to capture a series of images. Recipient allows you to email and it is covered in detail in another recording called Emailing Images. Printing. From this option, you can print a single periapical. You can print up to four images on one page, or you can print images in a mount. Let's take a look. If the pan image is open, you can select the print icon from the main toolbar, and the single image will print to one eight and a half piece of paper by eleven. If you just have one image open, even though it's a bite wing, it's a single image, and you press the print icon, that one image fills the whole page. Options for making that smaller include the same technique for printing up to four images on a page, holding down the control key on the keyboard, and with the mouse selecting one left mouse click. It puts a number in a bracket, select the printer icon, and it's basically a fourth of the page. So you could do this up to four times to have four images on one page. 
Another convenient way for printing a single image would be selecting context and print context. This will actually print the image in the size that it's displayed in the workspace. For more details on printing images, refer to the recorded class titled Printing Images. On the main toolbar, these icons allow acquiring from various imaging devices. We will explore acquiring from RVG sensors in the Actions portion coming up next. There is a recorded class on acquiring scanned images in the CareStream Dental Institute. Slideshow allows the displayed images to advance on the screen in a slideshow format. The slideshow can be paused and illustrations made on the images. We will explore this one in our action items from the file menu coming up next. The last icon on the main toolbar allows the user to exit the software. And now it's time to take action from the file menu. These selections allow acquiring from various imaging devices. Here we'll focus on RVG or acquisition from a sensor. RVG icon from the main toolbar to acquire a digital radiograph. In this case, the 6100 has been plugged in to the USB dock and it's been recognized by the software. The sensor must be activated prior to the radiation exposure for every image acquired. This can be done in the following ways. Press the remote button on the sensor that is pictured on this next slide. Click the RVG acquisition icon on the main toolbar or the function key F2. A 90 second timer is revealed. Warning. In the event multiple sensors are connected to the USB dock simultaneously, you must press the remote button on the sensor you want to use in order to activate. Otherwise, pressing F2 will only activate the last sensor used. The 6200 sensor, once plugged in to the USB dock and it's been recognized, the sensor icon will turn green and it's Position the image, expose, and view. If taking multiple images in a series, you can select a format. This option will allow the capture of multiple images. In the 6100, you must activate the sensor for each image taken. If you want to retake an image, Simply right click on the frame and discard by closing that image. Depending on the preference setting for autosave, the image is either closed and not saved or closed. It's removed from the mount, but it's still saved in the history if autosave is a preference. When taking a full mouse series of images, such as 4 byte wings or 18 images, you can select the mount first, then activate the sensor. This launches the RVG FMS acquisition window. The behavior for retakes is a little different in this software. Here, if you do not like the image acquired in frame number 1, you could place your mouse back on frame number one and retake the image until you have the desired image. Then you select the next frame so the software knows you're ready to continue. The Auto FMS option will allow the capture of multiple images in a series without the need to press the remote button on the 6100. To select a different mount in the RVG acquisition, select the gears in the top right corner of the screen to select a different mount. 
taking action from the file menu. When saving images, you can add comments to describe the file. To save an image, follow these steps and we'll take action from the file menu. File, Save. The dialog window appears. You can place a comment. You can put the necessary teeth numbers up to six teeth numbers. If you're correcting a previously saved image, you'll want to select same file so it overwrites the previously incorrect information. If you're wanting to make a copy, you can say new file and now you'll have one how it was originally saved and one how it was saved under the new file. If the image is a byte wing, you can select from any of these choices which will pre-populate the screen with the teeth numbers in the byte wing, such as left molar, right molar, left premolar, right premolar. Just makes it easy for saving a single byte wing. So file save is one of many ways to save an image. Here's another way to save an image. From the main toolbar, we saw the icon for Save. The same Save Image dialog window appears. If you right-click on an image, you have an option to save. If you use the keyboard keystrokes Control S, you have an option to save. Another option for saving involves dragging the single image to the selected tooth in the dental arch filter. For instance, if this was an image of tooth number 2 and 3, I would left click and hold and drag and drop the image over one of those teeth. It'll pre-populate the window with the number 2. I can add additional teeth numbers, such as tooth number 3, so that now it's saved to tooth number 2 and 3. Taking action from the file menu to retrieve an image. The patient history window list of all images for the current patient. To open the patient history, you can click File History Open, or you can click History Open, the first icon on the main toolbar. List, as displayed here, will list all of the images for the current patient and details about the image, which include the date, the time, the tooth number, a comment, a file size. Any one of those headings can be used to sort the images. If you knew what date it was taken on, you could sort by date. You could sort by time. The next tab of the patient history, intraoral, you would click to see a list of all the digital intraoral radiographic images. You could also see images taken in a format or intraoral color images that might have been obtained from an intraoral camera or a digital camera. At the time the images were saved, they were classified as intraoral. Extraoral tab you'll see a list of panoramic images, cephalometric images, superimposition for cephalometric will show as a cephalometric format, and intraoral images that were classified as extraoral. If images were saved in a context, they can be retrieved from the patient's history under the Context tab. When images are imported, if they're not classified, they get saved under Other. These are usually scanned images. The 3D volume will house all images that are captured that are cone bean images, known as 3D volumes. 3D images captured in the model or restoration software will be housed in either the model or the Restoration tab. Taking action from the File menu 
To delete an image, follow these steps. File, Delete. From the patient's history, select the image to be deleted. Notice the selection instead of a green frame has a red frame, and when you select OK, the system will prompt to confirm that you want to delete this image. You do have the option at that point if it's warning that maybe it's part of a full mile series and that if you do delete it, you will no longer be able to see that image in the mount. So we're not going to delete that image. But if you said OK, you could delete that image from the patient's history. Taking action from the file menu, Slideshow. Use Slideshow to present a set of images in a sequence and create a patient treatment presentation. You can save the presentation as a context to bookmark and link each image in the presentation. You can mix images to suit your purposes. For example, you could show one image several times and layer with other images. You can show cosmetic simulations and add annotations. Presentations are great ways to view the image within a full mouse series or other mount for larger and individual viewing. Here's an example of an annotation. Let's go take a look in the software. So with the format selected, you can select Slideshow. At this point, you can rearrange the images by clicking and dragging them to different positions if desired. You could change the slide intervals from 2 seconds to 1 second, or increase it if you want. Unchecking slide interval means that you would manually click next slide, next slide, next slide. But leaving it checked for two seconds will start the slideshow by pressing the start option and every two seconds a new image will be revealed on the screen. When you're ready to talk about a specific image and possibly do some illustrations, you can pause the recording. The icon with a ink pen and a slideshow projector screen reveals the tools that are available to you that allow you to draw attention to a certain area on the screen so that you can focus illustrations. When you're done, you can exit the slideshow. Take action from the File menu, Importing. To import one or more images from another directory or device such as a camera, follow these steps. File, Import Image File, or File, Import Digital Camera. You could also import 3D volumes. If you chose to import from a file, the system will ask where the files are stored. In this case, they're in a folder called Patient Images. Hold down the Control key to select random multiple images, and then press Open. The images are then imported into the software and save the imported images with the steps previously shown for saving images. Taking action from the file menu, copying. With an image open, you can select File, Copy. When you get ready to paste the image, you can paste that image into any other medium, such as a PowerPoint presentation, or an email, or a letter, so some type of document. 
It would just be right-clicking and pasting as you would for any other copied object. This concludes the Navigating the Software Recorded class. You should now be able to navigate the CS Imaging software, explore the menu items, take action from a file menu, such as acquiring, saving, retrieving, deleting, using the slideshow feature, importing, and copying.